Hey everyone, my name is Dylan, and today I wanted to share with you guys my story of how I went from no coding experience at all to landing a tech internship at a startup in Silicon Valley in about one and a half years. Now the path which I took might not be the same as anybody else's, but nonetheless, I want to share with you guys all the steps which I took and also at the end of this video, I'll tell you guys some key lessons and takeaways which you can apply to yourself as well. So a little bit about myself, I'm currently 19 years old and I attend the University of Waterloo for the Computer Science and Business Double Degree Program. And four months ago, I had a very, very fortunate opportunity to work with a startup in Silicon Valley called Limebike. And I'll get more into that later on. But first, let me go all the way back to the beginning. So it might be surprising to some people, but throughout my whole life, I always wanted to become a doctor. And I took specialized courses for that field. So in high school, I would take courses like chemistry, biology, physics, all the sciencey kind of courses. And my main motivation for becoming a doctor was that I liked helping people. And I could see myself doing that for many, many years. But also on the side, uh, aside from school, I used to game a lot. And I thought that creating a game would be also cool as well. And then one day, something really hit me hard. Uh, I realized that as a doctor, I would be helping one or a few people at a time, at most. But with technology, I could help millions of people at the same time. And that really influenced my decision of what I wanted to do in the future. So in my last year of high school, I ended up applying to many computer science programs in my area and hoping to get into one of them. Luckily, in the end, I actually ended up getting into the Computer Science and Business Double Degree program where I study Computer Science at the University of Waterloo and Business at Wilfrid Laurier University across the street and the program is about five years long. So I personally like to be prepared for what I do, but I realized that I have absolutely no coding experience at all and I'm going to be doing a Computer Science degree and this thought scared me. So what I ended up doing was trying to learn as much as I can in the summer between high school and university. So what I did um, is probably what everyone else does, is I just went online and searched for coding tutorials and ended up going through many, many different tutorials. So I went to Code Academy, Khan Academy, W3 schools. I saw YouTube videos such as Derek Banas, uh, <laughs> Traversy Media, and I was trying to learn as much as I could about HTML, CSS, Android development, Java development. And then in the end, I realized that all this was actually way, way too overwhelming. And I was um, <laughs> unmotivated to learn all of it because there was just so much content to pick up. What ended up happening next was that I got in touch with a friend who is also gonna be going to the same university. And he told me he was working on a startup idea. And I thought that was pretty cool since I'm gonna be going into the computer science and business double degree program. Uh, working on a startup is kind of kind of fits into the program and what I'm going to be doing. So I asked him if I could join and he said yeah. During that time, I ended up picking up HTML and CSS from mainly W3 schools. Uh, I found it was a really great resource. And then what I was doing with my friend was he would tell me some small bug fixes and small changes to do. And I would try and do that myself and also through the help of Stack Overflow and Google. And eventually, I was basically forcing myself to learn as much as I can um, from him doing working on this project. So the project itself used Ruby on Rails and React Native, um, which are two frameworks that are currently kind of popular right now. So the key takeaways about this startup was that I was continuously motivated to work on it because I thought it had a real impact um, and the idea was actually kind of decent. And I ended up working on it almost every day. And also I had a mentor, which is my friend, and I could ask him any questions that I wanted to ask instead of searching Stack Overflow. So this is also a very good help. And lastly, um, he ended up teaching me how to use Git, which is a very, very important skill for anyone going into, tech, into the tech industry. So by the end of the summer, I was slowly learning Ruby on Rails, and I ended up reading a book at uh, railsutorial.org, which is a really, really informative book and teaches you almost everything you need to know about Ruby on Rails which is a web framework um, to build web apps. Then um, summer was almost over and school was about to start. And by this time, I only had experience in HTML, CSS, and a bit of Ruby on Rails. So in my school CS courses, the main things they taught me in first year was about if statements, uh, loops, uh, basic programming 
um, fundamentals like variables and constants and all of that. And recursion was also a very key important thing I learned in first year. The language which I used to learn all these in was called Racket. It's not very well known. Uh, I think it's just for teaching purposes. And I think only University of Waterloo uses it actually. Um, but it was, it was a very good learning experience for learning recursion. Racket is a derivation of a programming language called Lisp. So despite school, my main coding practice, which I did on the side, was at hackathons. So for those of you who don't know what hackathons are, uh, basically they are events where you form a team and you think of an idea and throughout the entire weekend you build that idea using code and at the end of the at the end of the weekend you would present the idea to everyone and then hopefully you get a prize. So hackathons were actually one of my main sources of learning and improving my coding skills because I went there with almost no experience at all but I formed teams, I talked to people, talked to mentors and throughout the weekend, since you're put in a time pressure sensitive environment, um, you're forced to learn as much as you can and use Stack Overflow and all the resources you can to build your idea so you can win the prize. Also, it's something very good for your portfolio as well if you don't have anything in your portfolio yet. Part of going to University of Waterloo's computer science program is that I have to take internships during my off terms. So basically my summers or winters or any, any time I take off, I have to be doing an internship during that time. And so my second half of first year, I had to use the school's job searching software and look for internships to apply to. So after applying to a bunch of companies, I ended up getting around 11 interviews, which was amazing experience for me because I got real world tech interview experience that under my belt. So luckily in the end, I ended up getting an internship at a company called Mitre Media, which is a startup in the GTA and they own a bunch of financial sites. So my position there was a Ruby on Rails intern developer. And honestly, I really, really loved that job. It was my first ever actual job. And um, what I really loved about that place was that in the first week that we arrived there, there was about four interns from University of Waterloo. And the CTO of the startup took about a week off from his work to teach us everything we need to know about Ruby on Rails and also Git and GitHub. So that was an amazing experience. I also um, worked on side projects while I was at home. So things like my personal blog, I built it in Ruby on Rails from scratch uh, throughout that summer. But mainly I focus on learning and trying to master HTML, CSS, JavaScript and Ruby on Rails. So then summer internship was over and I ended up going back to school. And one of the courses I took in school was Intro to Object-Oriented Programming. So in the first two weeks, they ended up teaching us Bash, which is um, a terminal scripting language for, for Linux. And also, they taught us Object-Oriented Programming in C++. So during this school term, I had to also start looking for my internship for, my, for the next term, because my stream in school required me to do school, school, work in the summer, and then school, and then work um, in the winter, so from January till April. So what I ended up doing was I felt really confident in my skills. By this time, I attended about 16 or so hackathons throughout the summer and throughout first year, and I learned a lot. And also I felt really, really confident in my Ruby on Rails development skills. So I ended up applying to about 30 or 40 companies in Silicon Valley. Despite all these applications, um, I knew that I probably wasn't going to get the best response and that's what ended up happening actually. So I only got about three interviews. One was for Yahoo in Silicon Valley and I went to the interview and conducted that um, but it didn't go well at all. The interview itself was extremely tough and I wasn't able to answer the last question and in the end I did not end up getting that job. I ended up getting a coding challenge from a company called Limebike. So the coding challenge is basically they send me an email um, with the problem and I was supposed to code up a solution and send it back to them in whatever time frame they gave me So this coding challenge took me about eight hours to complete. It was a uh, it was something that I never done before and I took my time to really perfect my code and submit it So hopefully I can high chances of getting a job and then finally I actually ended up getting a response from them and They asked me just to conduct a phone interview So I conducted that with them and basically what it was is they called me on my cell phone and then they gave me a link to, uh, I think it was called CoderPad, 
where I go and code online and then they can see what I'm coding. So they asked me a few simple questions about myself. And then one of the questions they asked me was to implement a circular queue. Um, I knew what a queue was, but I didn't know what a circular queue was, but I kind of worked my way through it. And also the interviews are there to help you when you're interviewing. So they were guiding me throughout the way as well. Um, by the end of this one hour interview, I ended up successfully completing the entire, the entire process. And I was pretty happy about that. And then one week later, I heard back from them and they gave me an offer for an internship. So yeah, then I ended up going to California for an internship at Linebike. And it, it was an amazing experience. I had one of the best experiences of my life there. Linebike, for those of you guys who don't know, is um, a bike sharing company. So it's kind of like Uber, but for bicycles. So the way it works is that they leave bikes around the city and you use your phone to unlock those bikes and bike them wherever you want to. And once you're finished, you can lock the bike and leave it wherever you are. And the company on the back end keeps track of all the bikes. So my role in the company was an operations team developer for Ruby on Rails. And I'm not sure how much I can disclose about my tasks specifically, but I can tell you that I was working with um, basically GPS tracking of the bikes. Something amazing about this internship experience was that this company is a new startup. We started in 2018 and the code base that was there was some fresh code. It was uh, really, really good coding practices and I tried to absorb as much as I can from that company. And yeah, that was my internship experience at uh, Linebike. I know some of you might say that, yeah, I studied computer science and yeah, I got the internship through school. So it's a bit easier for me. But that's not really the case, that's just uh, negative thinking. All the coding practice which I got for Ruby on Rails um, was outside of school. No one in school taught me how to use Ruby on Rails or, or Git or anything like that. Everything I learned was on the side. Um, from anywhere from my friend who was uh, my mentor during the summer between high school and university and also from going to hackathons. Um, all these different external activities which I put my own time into I, is where I developed my skills and perfected them. And that's what really helped me get the job at Linebike. So some important takeaways for you guys so that you can also land your tech internships at Silicon Valley is first, I would recommend getting a mentor as soon as you can. A mentor can be really helpful because you can ask them any questions you have and they're there to help you grow and learn as a programmer. Secondly, I would recommend you guys choose a field so I know how overwhelming it can be in the beginning because there's so many different paths you can take and different languages you can learn, but you just need to choose one and stick with it. And what ends up happening is that once you go really far into the language and the programming concepts there, those same programming concepts can apply to other languages and other different fields as well. And lastly, what I recommend is that you start today. The more practice and more experience you have will help you land that job faster. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really hoped it helped you guys. Uh, if you have any questions about my experience, please leave any questions down in the comments below. And yeah, I'll see you next time.